are cars of the 20s, unique in the skill and craftsmanship that went into their construction. Fortunes were spent preparing and raising them. The First World War had ended and long-lasting peace with unlimited prosperity seemed to lie ahead. These are cars of the golden age of motor racing. Only seven months after the armistice, Marshal Foch is talking with Louis Chevrolet at the Indianapolis 500 miles victory sweepstakes. A few hastily assembled new cars and many leftovers bring motor racing back again. It's a tough race with a number of mechanical failures and accidents. Three men are killed. Bellows, which had been designed and built at a cost of some $120,000, are disappointing. Luckily, Chazanne is not seriously hurt. The race is won on a French Peugeot, owned and stored during the war by the American Speedway and driven by Howdy Wilcox. Next year, all their large cars will be obsolete, for the maximum engine size is to be almost cut by half. The great American sports boom has started. Tommy Milton, driving this Duesenberg at over 156 miles an hour, joins Jack Dempsey, Babe Ruth and Bobby Jones. Gaston Chevrolet and his brother also have new American cars for the 500. All have three-litre engines, the size set for the still non-existent French Grand Prix. French hopes are high, with Chazanne, Thomas and Guillaume, and goo. Besides new eight-cylinder bellows, which have already proved to be the fastest cars here. It is Joe Boyer on one of the Chevrolet cars in the lead. But the Chevrolet cars run into serious trouble. They have faulty steering arms. It looks like a certain win for a bellow, driven by the American ace De Palma. Only 14 laps to go, and it's De Palma's mechanic. He seems to have run out of petrol. No, it's a faulty magneto. But although he gets going, he's lost the lead. Bello has just failed to achieve his great ambition, to win a major race for France. first post-war French Grand Prix, and De Palma has come to Europe to drive in the Ballot team. The greatest of international motoring events is once again at Le Mans. De Palma goes off well, but the beautifully prepared white and blue American Duesenbergs are equally fast. The hydraulic brakes on their cars prove a great innovation, and the American drivers take to road racing with gusto. Then a 
12 laps, Jean Chazan on a ballot tries to snatch the lead for France. He succeeds, and there is an epic battle between the blue French car and the Americans. It's all very sporting. Nobody gives an inch. 